नमस्कार सो टुडे इन द थर्ड डे द सेकंड सेशन इज अबाउट वीड्स पेस्ट्स डिजीजेस एंड डिसऑर्डर्स इन द होम गार्डन एंड व्हाट आर द होम रेमेडीज वी कैन यूज टू टेक केयर ऑफ दीज प्रॉब्लम्स so first uh, uh, let us talk about weed uh, weed is uh, very uh, important uh, for uh, our uh, ecosystem uh, in fact uh, in nature uh, nature's dictionary there is no term like weed uh, we uh, classify uh, certain plants into weed and certain other plants into uh, a crop depending on uh, whether it is uh, 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 grown by us we are sowing the we have sown the seed and we are growing it if we are we are growing it ourselves then it uh, we call it crop and if it is growing automatically in nature uh, if nature is growing it then we call it weed because it is not uh, useful to us in fact uh, it's not that way all the plants uh, are, are useful for us only thing is that we must know uh, what is the use of that and uh, how to use uh, use that plant so uh, wheat is uh, basically uh, the unwanted undesirable plant which grows naturally strongly in its uh, most favorable soil and conducive conditions against all odds and hurdles created by nature uh, and uh, uh, th think that threatens gardeners uh, in fact it is not threatening uh, any uh, any of us but we feel threatened because uh, it is growing on its own and it is growing faster than the plants we are growing actually and uh, it is growing healthier also because it is uh, the conditions are more suitable more uh, uh, conducive for that plant to which is growing on its own and uh, uh, that's why uh, it is competing with our uh, crop plant to that way and uh, because it is uh, uh, looking better so we think that it is uh, uh, taking all the nutrients and it is threatening etc etc actually it's not that way so differentiation uh, as i said that uh, because of our own uh, 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 selfish outlook egoistic attitude and superiority complex towards the mother nature we uh, think that what we are trying to grow should only grow and uh, 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 anything should not come out uh, uh any seed anything should not grow on its own without our our uh, uh, consent but otherwise we we are uh, weeds are very good soil indicators uh, when i say uh, soil indicators i'll explain uh, how uh, looking at the weeds we can understand about our soil what kind of soil it is and what is what it requires and how to deal with the soil or what to do with the soil uh, etc so what are the benefits of the weeds because i'll talk about benefits benefits only uh, because it's a, this is also nature's creation and in nature nothing is created wastefully so weeds indicate certain specific soil properties many weeds are actually useful as medicinal herbs and also uh, simultaneously uh, particularly tribals they go into the forest and they collect certain specific type of weeds for their vegetable purpose so it is naturally growing as a weed but uh, it has it is edible also so certain vegetable weeds are edible also and many most of the medicinal herbs are uh, otherwise uh, growing as weed in the nature unless until it is cultivated in some uh, uh, some farm or in organized way weeds are natural and local remedies for pests and diseases this is very important for us actually that uh, the plant which is growing on its own and uh, uh, growing healthy uh, uh, least affected or less affected by pests and diseases as compared to our crops which we are growing uh, then uh, that uh, plant has got some extra properties or extra uh, uh, substance because of which uh, pests and diseases are not uh, Uh, affecting that so that means it has got some medicinal properties uh, or the, has some remedies for uh, certain uh, specific pest and diseases a uh, root system of different weed uh, plants actually draw nutrient from different strata of the soil 
the, this picture you can see the dense uh, uh, vegetation is there at the surface of the soil and uh, uh, different uh, plants have uh, root uh, uh, growing down deep down and uh, three uh, strata uh, have been here uh, marked and you can see that uh, uh, the roots from different uh, depth are drawing nutrients uh, and bringing it up to the plant and once this uh, uh, green vegetation becomes dry at the end of the season this vegetation only automatically naturally recycled in this soil so this during this recycling it is on the top soil so uh, uh, in other words this uh, nutrients from different uh, depth in different uh, strata of the soil are brought up and uh, um, uh, uh, actually enriched enriching the to top soil so it is recycling and uh, 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 enriching the soil, it is increasing the fertility of the soil. This is how wheat plants uh, play a role in uniform distribution of the nutrient in soil. So what is happening that uh, if uh, any plant is uh, uh, requiring, uh, which requires a certain specific nutrient, but it is not here, uh, it is not available at the top otherwise. So if we don't allow the weeds to grow or uh, uh, only the crops, then uh, uh, the distribution of uh, nutrient in the soil will not be very uniform. So uh, weeds, uh, uh, this uh, automatically coming vegetation actually does that. So in any place, if a crop is infected by certain pest or disease, but weed is unaffected, that means what? That, that weed plant is having certain, certain extra properties, certain extra uh, substance or certain extra uh, characteristics uh, uh, the immunity, uh, or can say overall, uh, if I say, uh, because of which that uh, plant is not affected by any uh, of the disease and pest, uh, which otherwise uh, uh, actually infecting our uh, main uh, crop plant. So it signifies that Mother Nature always give problems as caution and simultaneously give remedies uh, as solution. So problem is wherever problem is there, remedies are also uh, present around. The only thing is that we have to understand and identify uh, the uh, what uh, where is the remedy and what is the solution, uh, how to use that solution, uh, and uh, I'll talk about that here. So here, if you can see the soil indicator, weeds are uh, soil indicators. Here, uh, I've taken few examples. If you see the bind wheat, uh, this is the plant. This is how it grows, uh, like a, a creeper can say. And wherever it is present, that means it indicates the soil is very compact. If soil is very compact, that means the aeration is not much there and clay, po clay portion is more in the soil. If compactness is there, that means clay, po clay percentage is high in the soil. Similarly, nap weed is another uh, kind of weed which grows automatically. You can say this is also uh, not growing up or upright, but it is more uh, horizontally uh, uh, growing it and spreading on the soil. Uh, uh, presence means high potassium in the uh, soil. That is the abundance of potassium uh, it indicates in the soil. Uh, and uh, pigweed is another plant which is uh, also, it goes upright actually a uh, little bit. And uh, presence of this means uh, soil has abundance of nitrogen. The nitrogen rich soil, uh, uh, this uh, weed goes because this requires more of nitrogen. This requires more of potassium, uh, like that. Uh, similarly, here, if you see uh, this uh, campion, uh, wherever it grows, the soil is alkaline. So this uh, this grows in alkaline soil. Uh, alkaline soil means uh, I'm talking about 7.5 plus, uh, or maybe 8 or 8.5. So high alkaline soil, this kind of uh, weeds you see. So whenever you see this kind of plant with uh, flowering, etc. That means that soil is alkaline on a higher side. And mullein is another weed which grows upright and this is the st structure, this is how it looks. And uh, if uh, this, uh, this plant is visible, that means the soil is acidic and uh, low acidic. That means uh, below for 5.5 or 5, it's around that or uh, even a little lower uh, uh, pH. And uh, uh, low pH means uh, uh, low in nutrient also. It will be less fertile soil. And another weed is there, which is purslane. Very common, you can see this, uh, uh, this reddish purplish uh, branches are there and leathery thick leaves are there. And th this is how it grows. 
uh, in that uh, one type is there which is green uh, branches instead of uh, purple uh, color but uh, this is uh, also used as a vegetable uh, the uh, tribals use it as a vegetable and in villages also uh, people use it as a vegetable also fresh vegetable and wherever it grows means uh, abundance of phosphorus because this requires more phosphorus so this uh, uh, in other words if i say that whenever you see this kind of weeds and if you collect the weeds and use it in your compost that means you are adding more of the potassium in compost if your soil is weak in compo uh, this uh, potassium then if you, you use these kind of weeds in composting then you are enriching the uh, your compost uh, actually with the potassium or for example nitrogen or uh, phosphorus etc so different uh, type of uh, uses uh, is there in weed weeds like weeds do the balancing of nutrient soil nutrient which i have already told weeds also serve as a natural green mulch on the ground uh, what i mean to say here is that uh, whenever you, you must remove the weeds of course uh, you cannot just allow it to grow uh, but when you remove it don't just don't, don't throw it out either you cover the soil with that weed so it will act as mulch and uh, it will preserve the soil moisture uh, on one hand on the other and it will allow the uh, aeration also or else you can use it in the uh, composting also uh, for, for the green uh, green uh, portion of the composting green organic matter uh, which will be uh, as i have earlier ex explained about uh, balancing the cn ratio that is the carbon and nitrogen ratio so this will source this will contribute to the green uh, part we serve as alternate host uh, uh, hence reduce threat to uh, threat on the crop also because uh, there are two two possibilities one is that uh, uh, your crop is uh, getting infected with the pest or disease and your wheat plant is not uh, 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 showing any symptom of pest or disease that means it has got the resistance it has got some substance because of this Uh, uh, because of which uh, the uh, pest or disease is not uh, uh, affecting that that means it has got the medicine it has got the remedy and that uh, weed uh, leaves or flowers or uh, uh, you can use uh, to prepare the uh, remedy for the uh, pest and disease which your uh, is affecting your plant or else in some cases you will find that that weed plant also is uh, uh, getting affected and then uh, uh, it is actually providing an alternate host to the pest or disease that means if uh, that wheat plant is more preferable for the pest or disease then your crop is uh, your crop plant is uh, actually saved uh, if you, if you remove the weed then your crop plant will uh, be the only uh, host available there and all the uh, infection will happen in that only so either way uh, Uh, weed is actually uh, if you understand it properly and uh, see that uh, how it is uh, ha happening what how it is behaving accordingly you can take the uh, uh, i mean uh, you can uh, take the advantage of that so weeds indicate about the soil properties like sogginess compactness acidity or alkalinity or nutrient specific fertility level etc so these are the different kind of uh, uh, i mean uh, Uh, benefits of the weed so blindly just uh, remove and throw it out uh, uh, without uh, uh, actually uh, uh, ignoring all these um, indica indicators uh, is not good actually nature's way of weed control uh, uh, if i uh, elaborate it here uh, weeds come out, come uh, on its own uh, during the conducive season particularly uh, in the rainy season uh, after the first rain or second shower or third shower you see a green cover coming up uh, automatically from nowhere and then it dense uh, vegetation happens and then as the season uh, advances uh, the flowering fruiting happens and then uh, slowly slowly this uh, end of the season uh, the yellowing of the plants and then uh, the seeds disperse and uh, then uh, the plants uh, also vanish and uh, recycling process happens uh, all these things happen around us but uh, since we are not uh, uh, aware of that we don't look at the uh, towards that we don't uh, focus on that so uh, we don't uh, bother about that 
but uh, that is the way nature uh, natural cycle happens but uh, all those seeds because for one plant only one seed is required so so many plants uh, growing together uh, and uh, every plant uh, from coming from one seed but every plant is producing multiple seeds so next season uh, it should be uh, uh, 10 times 100 times or 1000 times uh, whatever it is uh, should be the vegetation but it doesn't happen that way it is within certain range or actually it is not too dense or it is not too scanty of the vegetation every year uh, what happens to the so many number of seeds innumerable seeds are produced uh, by the uh, uh, plants wheat plants actually so uh, as we consume the uh, 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 different kind of seeds as food similarly uh, similarly uh, uh, different uh, uh, insects and birds and animals also uh, consume the uh, seeds uh, uh, as food uh, particularly the birds and the insects they also consume the uh, uh, seeds as food and uh, uh, a lot of seeds uh, are uh, uh, removed from the whole system of from the whole ecosystem of that cycle of uh, life cycle of weed as a food uh, then uh, a lot of other uh, seeds uh, are uh, washed away with along with the rain or uh, maybe with the wind or uh, many other ways and uh, uh, some have uh, uh, reached in a certain place where it cannot have the conducive uh, conditions uh, next season for uh, germination so they are wasted and ultimately the set of seeds which are able to uh, survive because seed is a life thing so are able to survive till the next uh, season the next conducive conditions that only get the opportunity to germinate and uh, in germ after germination also all those plants doesn't come up, come up Uh, 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 together and uh, uh, after the germination, when the plant is growing, also a lot of animals, the herbivores, also feed on that, and the plant is uh, finished. So uh, the next cycle of the uh, flowering, fruiting, and next generation, uh, only uh, a percentage of certain number of plants only get that opportunity, and that is how the nature's uh, checks and balances work. coming to the pest and uh, uh, in our home garden first of all let us understand uh, uh, how the pest reaches our home garden uh, because for example in any metro city where tall uh, buildings uh, say in the 30th or uh, 50th floor uh, we are setting up the garden and a nice beautiful garden uh, has been uh, developed set up and suddenly we find that some pest is there some disease is there Uh, from where it has come in uh, villages in the farmers field it is possible it is uh, that cycle is going on because uh, uh, crop after crop uh, it is getting the uh, host and uh, uh, it is uh, life cycle is going on but here uh, nothing was uh, present so where from it has come because uh, uh, unless until it is it is reaching our garden how can it uh, infect our plants so first we have to see that what is the source of pest in home garden how it is reaching so these are the ways either it is coming with, along with the fresh vegetables what we are buying from the market we we, we use the vegetables we consume the vegetables and uh, while using and consuming uh, certain parts we throw uh, we we clean it uh, we remove the skin or leaves etc extra part etc and uh, whatever is uh, consumable we take it uh, Uh, for our cooking and rest of the things we throw it uh, and uh, we don't look at or we don't know even that uh, maybe some uh, insect uh, or, or uh, uh, disease fungal disease spore is there or some insect egg is there on that part which we are throwing and wherever we are throwing we are not very particular about that maybe in dustbin or maybe if we have the garden then in the garden uh, somewhere so that gets the opportunity to get into the next generation also uh, if we have the animals uh, uh, domestic animals they go out and along with that uh, uh, animal in, with their feet or uh, with their body also uh, pest and disease spores can come or uh, birds of course uh, uh, are flying uh, uh, organisms 
and they can can go anywhere and they can reach anywhere they can sit anywhere so they are also carrier of the uh, insects insect eggs and uh, disease spores etc uh, similarly our footwear also does the same thing as the animals do and uh, uh, if we are not uh, very particular about that and uh, 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 then also the uh, uh, this kind of infection of uh, pest and diseases can reach to our garden and one of the most important uh, source is also the nurseries because when we buy the plants or and bring at home in our home garden that uh, uh, the whole system of the plant along with the pots etc the soil the soil mix everything is there in that and uh, anywhere uh, the disease spores or pest uh, uh, pests or pest egg, uh, insect eggs etc can uh, be carried along with that so all these things are there and then uh, if we have the Uh, sustainability factors are present there for those pest then uh, it uh, it can survive and if it survives then uh, we have uh, it gets the host plant if it is present there in our home garden then it will uh, thrive actually and uh, that infestation can be indoor outdoor or both ways uh, uh, depending on the host plant and uh, the ecosystem which is uh, there around us if it is uh, 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 suitable uh, then uh, uh, actually uh, it thrives and then it, uh, uh, it it continues with the life cycle and in that uh, 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 there is a competition also if uh, there is a multiple type of uh, pest or multiple type of host are there so I, uh, either way uh, it uh, it gets it it gets a new ecosystem for itself and it, if it is conducive suitable enough then we see the problem persisting similarly uh, if you see uh, that uh, pest uh, are uh, visible in our uh, uh, garden that is indicating something it is giving some message and what message it is giving it is uh, giving the message that uh, either the predators the uh, population of predators are declining because otherwise uh, as i said uh, natural checks and balances uh, everything is the food of some other uh, uh, thing some other organism whether it is uh, uh, vegetate uh, uh, this uh, plant uh, kingdom or the animal kingdom either way uh, it is uh, cy- cycling and recycling so if predators population is declining then the, the pest population will increase and uh, if uh, predators are uh, survive uh, struggling for survival that means the climatic condition is not suitable uh, in the whole ecosystem there and uh, uh, that is connected with the natural rhythm which uh, will be uh, explained in the next uh, session actually lunar calendar part uh, natural uh, uh, repellents are absent because uh, uh, as i said about the plants and the weeds etc uh, there are certain plants which uh, act as host and certain plants act, act as repellent which are not suitable for that so if uh, Uh, a group of host plants are there then that uh, pest will uh, thrive and if uh, along with the host plant uh, if surrounded by the uh, uh, non suitable plants uh, uh, not suitable for for that uh, pest then uh, the population cannot thrive and it will be limited on that uh, single host only so uh, uh, there is a companionship uh, uh, we have to plan while uh, planning our garden companion planting it is said companion planting that uh, uh, one plant can have uh, the uh, diseases and pest of certain set and uh, the adjoining the surrounding plants are of different types having different pest and disease problems and are grown together then they take care of each other then of course uh, also the food availability because the pest uh, uh, is uh, Uh, thriving that means uh, the food is in uh, abundance uh, similarly uh, if uh, we are having uh, some control also on that uh, organic control even then also if it is uh, uh, it is still surviving that means probably in natural conditions some mutation is happening it is developing the resistance and we all know about the mutation and resistance so we have because of the covid problem we all understood understand now that uh, a mutation happens and resistance happens uh, <laughs> like that so population explosion can happen due to increased reproduction 
if the all all over temperature and humidity the ecosystem everything collectively uh, if uh, at micro and macro level all are uh, suitable for that pest then uh, the uh, reproduction uh, is, uh, capability increases the uh, life cycle multiplies and we see the pest expo population explosion there are two kind of uh, insects actually uh, let us classify which one is pest and which one is not pest so there are uh, certain uh, insects which are vegetarian in nature and those vegetarian in nature are actually the enemies of uh, for us or culprit uh, in our garden because they feed on our plant parts and th that is where is the problem for us another set of insects are there which feed on other uh, other insects they are the non vegetarian insects or the predators or the parasites they either feed on the uh, other insects and they actually uh, control the population of the, those uh, pest insects like uh, the vegetarian insects for that matter certain uh, bugs are there or caterpillars are there which uh, feed on the leaves or uh, certain other uh, insects are there which uh, suck the sap from the leaves or the branches the twigs or certain other insects are there which bore inside the stem or the fruit so these are the different type of insects which are actually vegetarian and they are actually the pest for us and but another set of insects are there which are can be classified as non vegetarian insects uh, feeding on them or they uh, lay egg uh, inside their body and the, their life cycle goes on accordingly so these these are few uh, beneficial insects uh, you can see here that uh, these uh, these are the bugs which uh, feed on other insects or the butterflies for that matter they help in pollination so pollinators are also the beneficial insects and without pollination uh, many number of fruit uh, uh, plants we do cannot get the any production the particularly the cross pollinated plants so pollinators are in, uh, important and uh, many insects which otherwise are pests at certain uh, stage of their life cycle but also they help in pollination like for example butterflies their younger gen generation that is caterpillar feed on the leaves but uh, the elder adult gen generation they do the pollination and similarly uh, there are many other in insects which uh, actually uh, are predators or uh, parasites these are the harmful insects uh, which uh, actually uh, feed on uh, the plant parts above ground that is leaf or branches or fruits or uh, like that or certain uh, insects are there which are present in the soil and they damage the fruits also and they actually uh, uh, through that uh, uh, wound in the roots uh, the further uh, uh, disease uh, uh, the fungal disease or bacterial disease uh, uh, inoculation happens to the roots and then it uh, spreads in the plant and uh, the plant uh, dies so uh, these are the different type of uh, like uh, leaf miner this is very common uh, it, it feeds on the uh, the green portion between the two layers of the leaves uh, and then the, these are the slugs and uh, snail they also feed on the leaves or uh, these uh, bugs are there sub, uh, suck the sap or uh, caterpillars etc different kind of uh, harmful insects are there so we must before uh, deciding about any control or uh, getting threatened by uh, or getting scared that uh, pest problem is uh, there in the garden uh, let us uh, try to identify what kind of insect it is and uh, very simple to uh, understand that if uh, you see the presence of the insect but you don't see any damage uh, of any kind uh, in your plants any of the plants whether Uh, uh, the leaves or the flowers or the fruits or the branches or anything the plant is growing healthy without any damage done by the insects uh, then probably that insect is beneficial and it has got its uh, food in the form of other insects which also may not be the pest on the plant but uh, it is there uh, present in the ecosystem so need not to bother about uh, certain home remedies i have uh, uh, suggested here Uh, which can be uh, which are readily available at home or it can be sourced from the market also and uh, respective uh, problems uh, which can be treated with those uh, home remedies how to prepare that and uh, 
uh, how to use that. Uh, this I have uh, uh, given here, like basil is there, black pepper, or uh, green chili, which is very pungent type, uh, and then eucalyptus oil, neem, etc. Long list is there. Uh, detailed uh, uh, account of this uh, is uh, there in my book. Here I have just mentioned few examples. Similarly, the disease, if we talk about the disease, they also have certain channel to reach to our uh, gardens. And uh, uh, if uh, there are such susceptible plants, uh, here through this, this diagram, let us understand that disease occurrence will happen uh, if three factors are simultaneously present. First is the pathogen. Unless the pathogen reaches the uh, garden, uh, there is no chance of getting the uh, disease. And that pathogen should have the conducive environment for uh, the infection. And uh, along with the conducive environment, the susceptible host should be there. If there is no host, then also pathogen is there, cond conducive environment is there, but uh, host plant is not there, then also disease will not be present. So suppose you see the problem in the plant, then all these three factors are working together uh, in, a, in a balanced uh, uh, system. Uh, as uh, I have explained about the uh, channels for uh, the uh, pest, same is the channel for the disease to reach in our garden. And uh, we have to see that uh, all these uh, uh, factors working together or uh, uh, we, uh, whether we have some resistant uh, plants uh, uh, or tolerant plant or susceptible plant in uh, our garden. If uh, resistant plants are there, then uh, the disease occurrence will not happen. If tolerant plants are there, then also it can skip the uh, disease uh, uh, and you will get the product. It, uh, you will find the disease on the plant, but it will not affect your productivity of the plant. That is the uh, term uh, tolerance means that a plant is getting uh, the infected but it is uh, it is not uh, affecting the productivity as as such you are able to get the production but if a plant is susceptible highly susceptible then uh, you actually compromise on the productivity plant dies before giving any product production so uh, if a disease is a, uh, there uh, is infecting the plants, that means the plant is, uh, there is some health problem in the plant. The plant is poor in health. Different kind of diseases uh, uh, are there, like uh, uh, waterborne bacterial diseases are there, or airborne uh, spores of fungal diseases are there. That means uh, through air also uh, diseases can come, or soil-borne fungal and uh, bacterial diseases are there. If you, the watering uh, uh, you are doing and that water source is not very clean, your water is not very clean, then also through that fungal and bacterial diseases can, can come. Or some insect pest also can uh, bring the uh, viral diseases, the virus, because virus uh, cannot move on its own uh, in case of plant diseases. Generally, they are spread through the vectors, that is uh, the carriers which are generally the different kind of pests. And those pests are normally the sucking pests, which suck the sap from the plant leaf or the fruit or the branches, tender branches, or even flowers. The nutrient imbalance also leads to the susceptibility. If the plant is not getting proper nutrition, it is malnutrited plant develops the susceptibility. And uh, also, if uh, you are trying to grow the plant uh, in off season, that is, uh, you're growing early, too early or uh, too late, uh, you're moving uh, away from the season, then also the disease resistance uh, is reduced in the plant. A plant will have the best of its health in the uh, proper season. Improper companionship encourages disease incidence also, as I have explained earlier, that uh, uh, the, what is the combination of plant uh, uh, planting you have. If you have all the uh, host plants together, then the disease will thrive. And if you have a mix of companionship, like a host plant and non-host plant uh, growing together, then the disease incidence will be controlled. 
spread will be controlled rather. Uh, repeated cultivation in, of the same plant in the same soil also enhances uh, soil borne diseases because uh, uh, the life cycle goes on in the soil. And if you're growing same plant again and again in the same soil, uh, then uh, the uh, disease population, the spore population increases in the soil and every next generation of the plant, you will find more uh, more and severe, uh, severely infected uh, uh, disease problem. Imbalance in ecosystem at micro and macro level also uh, reduces or increases the disease uh, tolerance. Because uh, uh, all these microorganisms are very sensitive to the uh, micro uh, climate. Uh, when I say microclimate, that is temperature and humidity. If sudden, uh, uh, here, uh, when I say uh, microorganisms, it includes the insects also because they are minute uh, organisms. Uh, they, their range of uh, uh, their range of sustainability for the temperature and uh, humidity is very narrow. If sudden uh, change uh, in increase in the temperature or uh, decrease in the temperature or uh, increase in the humidity or decrease in the humidity which is beyond their range, sustainable range, they die. So th that is one of the natural way of control, automatic control can say, uh, but uh, if it is uh, otherwise, it is suitable, then also they, they, they thrive. So different kind of diseases are there, uh, the fungal diseases, the bacterial diseases and viral diseases. In that fungal diseases, uh, certain diseases are seed borne diseases, that is they, are carried from one generation to another generation in the seed, along with the seed. It can be on the seed coat outside, or it can be, infection can be inside the seed also. And when you sow the seed in the soil, and then the, uh, the spore of the fungus uh, uh, develops, and uh, it infects the uh, seedling at the uh, very early stage when the root is uh, growing from the seed, or uh, a little later when the shoot is growing uh, from the seed, still it, uh, it has not come out of the soil, or maybe it is growing along with the plant and then on a later uh, stage, it expresses the disease problem. Uh, it depends on the type of the disease. There are many types of diseases uh, infecting the different type of plants. Uh, so uh, uh, that's why seed treatment is important. And uh, whether it is a chemical treatment or organic method of treatment, when you do the seed treatment, actually you protect the seed and the seedling from these seed borne diseases on one hand. On the other hand, suppose seed is clean because it is treated, uh, the soil uh, or the growing medium can have the spores. And when you sow the seed and uh, uh, it can uh, infect the, seed, the growing seedling. Uh, so uh, with the seed coat, uh, actually uh, the seed treatment, you actually grow that uh, 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 you, you you actually protect the seed uh, from uh, from uh, getting infected. Similarly, uh, soil borne diseases also occur in root and stem. If uh, uh, certain diseases, the fungal diseases are there, which uh, uh, are present in the soil, so uh, you have to see what is the source of your soil or the growing medium. Uh, generally, if you are sourcing it from the nursery and it is not very clean or very no not uh, sterilized properly, then you are actually bringing the uh, problem from the nursery. Uh, you're buying the problem rather, I, if I say. Airborne diseases are there, which uh, uh, actually uh, the uh, fungal spores uh, 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 remain suspended in the air. And along with the wind, uh, they blow uh, away from one place to another place. And because they are light in uh, air and remains suspended, so it can reach to any floor, uh, 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 even at higher uh, level, higher uh, 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 stories also. And uh, that's why you find uh, the diseases uh, in the urban uh, uh, high-rise buildings also. Similarly, bacterial diseases are also soil-borne, uh, which occur in uh, through the root and the stem, or air-borne, uh, certain bacterial diseases are there. So if it is soil borne, uh, as I said, you must uh, check your water, how clean it is, and uh, whether it is uh, from any uh, source which is not very clean or sterilized properly. Uh, when I say sterilized, uh, I don't mean to say that you need to sterilize the water, this thing, but uh, it, 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 if it is giving some bad smell, 
then probably it is it, it has some uh, uh, disease uh, uh, agents disease causing agents if water is not giving any bad smell then it is clean because uh, 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 bad smell water means in that uh, oxygen level is less and if oxygen level is less then uh, the disease uh, spores will uh, survive in that and uh, uh, it will give the bad smell similarly for the viral insects uh, insect it is spreads through i mean viral diseases spreads through the insects so if you see some insect problem is there and uh, uh, it is not taken care in time uh, probably it has already spread the infect uh, in uh, i mean inoculated the viral uh, uh, disease in your plant so these are different uh, ways to understand the problem and then accordingly take care of that uh, in, in detail if i talk about the fungal diseases the different type of uh, molds and rust uh, mildews and powdery mildews rots rotting canker etc different symptoms are there you can you see different uh, kind of uh, problems in the plants and here you can understand uh, which type of symptom means what kind of uh, fungal disease actually similarly for bacterial disease uh, in some uh, parts of the leaves or the fruits or the stem you see some soft uh, tissues uh, which is uh, uh, because of the some bacterial disease or some spots you see on the uh, leaves and fruits can be also because of the fungal disease or wilting happens maybe because of that uh, also i mean some bacterial infection similarly for viral disease you see the mottling of the leaves that is leaves uh, be, uh, uh, become brittle and cupping happens it it uh, forms cup shape uh, actually and it uh, the it it becomes brittle so uh, that can be possible or distortion in the growth or dwarfing of the growth plant is not growing the leaves are not growing um, uh, new branches are not coming that can be also because of the viral disease so these are the different ways uh, to understand what kind of disease is there but uh, control measure home remedies uh, i have just mentioned few years and these are all uh, actually readily available at home like garlic or henna powder mint uh, tea etc and turmeric uh, which take care of different kind of uh, uh, diseases for example powdery mildew you can use garlic or for fungal diseases henna is a good uh, uh, medicine actually or mint also for fungal and bacterial diseases if uh, you see root rot in roses tea leaves the used tea, tea leaves uh, you, you should add in the soil in uh, rose pots and then turmeric also uh, and how to prepare that uh, uh, and then how to use that i just uh, mentioned here much detail is there in the book then comes a uh, disease uh, disorders if uh, uh, some problem we see it may not be the pest problem it may not be the disease problem but uh, some other uh, reason is there so uh, what i mean to say that let us first diagnose what is the root cause of the pro problem and what is the uh, expression of the plant whether it is actually uh, uh, trying to save itself protect itself for uh, uh, it is has some resistance power or uh, it is working uh, uh, some immunity is working or not how to understand that so in this uh, uh, picture if you see that uh, uh, sun is there then uh, slight cloudy weather and then uh, raining so if uh, sunny day is there and uh, dry weather is there then uh, leaf becomes yellow because of the transpiration and uh, in the soil also the moisture is less so you see the yellowing and wilting of the plant and uh, if uh, humidity increases and temperature also increases then also it is not very suitable for the plant it is uh, a kind of suffocating can say because hot and uh, humid climate is not uh, we can understand from our own experience also what we like what we don't like what kind of weather we like and what kind of weather we don't like similarly plants also have their own uh, way of liking the weather or not and then uh, if it is raining heavily Uh, then uh, the temperature is little cool down but uh, humidity is very high so accordingly plant has its own way of uh, adaptation or uh, adjusting uh, with the condition but uh, all these kind of things are a abiotic conditions similarly there is uh, some certain biotic conditions like some pest or disease problems 
above uh, in the uh, leaf part or above ground part or in the inside the soil also. So how it works actually? Uh, here we, if you see, uh, because hot condition and uh, dry condition, dehydration happens, and then plant uh, uh, tries uh, uh, droops down or uh, uh, shows uh, wilting uh, 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 wilting symptoms, and then uh, uh, dehydration happens because of the watering, seeing the condition, or uh, maybe because of the rains, and then again uh, uh, plant recovers and revives. Uh, con uh, uh, understanding this, uh, what happens that uh, this is a kind of experience uh, for the plant, and what happens when the uh, uh, plant uh, understands this uh, that the, this is what is happening that uh, in a hot dry condition that is the peak of the day uh, when the temperature is high and the humidity is also minimum, uh, and uh, you might see that uh, different plants the leaves are drooping. And as the sun sets and the temperature cools down, uh, also the humidity slowly increases because of the cooling of the uh, atmosphere. And then plant uh, revives, the plants look fresh. In your own garden also this kind of thing happens. So plants try to adjust itself. That, that drooping uh, method or the uh, leaves uh, start, start uh, dro uh, drooping and they reduce the surface area exposed to the atmosphere and the stomatas, the pores in the leaves, they close down. So they try to conserve itself. They reduce their, like in the winter, if it is cool weather and we don't have the proper woolen cover, clothing, then we shiver and we try to squeeze ourselves, fold our hands and etc. So similarly, plant also does that. This is what is the... Uh, uh, nature's way of uh, adjustment. Uh, so, uh, uh, understanding all the factors uh, in the uh, previous uh, sessions the, about the uh, soil, because if the soil is healthy, plant will be healthy. And let us uh, see how it is. The, in the soil, the soil factors are like uh, the soil structure, sand, silt, and clay. And then uh, the nutrients, the primary nutrients, secondary nutrient, micronutrient, macronutrient, all uh, if are there in a proper uh, quantity uh, in abundance for that way. And then organic matters are there, like uh, the humus, the uh, other organic matter, which is in de decomposition process. And some fresh are there, like uh, weeds are removed and mulching is done, which is fresh, still fresh. And recycling process, it is going and decomposing will happen in a certain time. And then soil uh, microorganisms like bacteria and fungi, all these are present in proper uh, ratio in uh, natural, uh, uh, natural condition. It is um, uh, healthy soil. And if uh, soil is healthy, plant will be healthy. If uh, soil is not healthy, then it can be low in fertility because uh, nutrients are less or maybe microbial activity is slow because population is less, or maybe organic matter is less, so um, um, which is the food for the uh, microorganisms. If it is not uh, sufficiently present there, then also the micro, uh, this uh, nutrient will not be uh, um, available to the plant. And uh, also the soil structure, if it is too sandy or too clay, too sandy means uh, uh, the uh, moisture will be less, uh, or two clay means compactness will be there. So if all are in perfect uh, uh, ratio, then healthy soil and plant will be healthy. If anything is uh, not proper imbalance, in imbalance, then it uh, shows the effect, the impact, uh, the uh, result in the plant health. So soil nutrient uh, 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 pH and uh, we have earlier uh, uh, understood about the pH. So the ideal range of pH is between 6, .6 to 6.5 or uh, rather I, I, if I say up to 7.5 because certain plants uh, have wider uh, range of adaptability and certain plants have uh, 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 within the acidic level or within the alkaline level. So it is, let us consider 6 to 7.5. And in this range, if you see that most of the nutrients are available uh, either in uh, abundance like um, uh, in green portion or uh, uh, available uh, uh, sufficiently like uh, yellow portion or 
in deficiency in red portion so if you see this this range most of the nutrient like the macronutrient nitrogen phosphorus and potassium are generally available in uh, available uh, range is the uh, 6 to 7 or 7.5 also can say this band and uh, others are in uh, uh, required in micro level uh, in test quantity very uh, small quantity and in that if you see in this range uh, they are either in optimum uh, available in optimum quantity or little bit of um, uh, less quantity but uh, uh, it is okay sufficient because if you see iron on the low uh, ph it is uh, available in abundance uh, but uh, here uh, if you see the boron and zinc uh, uh, in alkaline condition it is available in less quantity but if you see the band uh, between this most of the plants are comfortable uh, more or less and if deficiencies are there it is expressed on the plant uh, in different ways and when you see these kind of symptoms it may not be because of any pest or any disease but uh, actually the soil is uh, not able to supply the sufficient nutrient to the plant due to different uh, uh, reasons maybe it is not available in the soil not present in the soil or if it is present in the soil but the ph level of the plant Uh, 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 the ph adaptability of the plant and the ph uh, range uh, ph level of the soil is not uh, matching plant has its own uh, suitable range uh, suitability range and soil uh, ph is uh, so somewhere else then also uh, it will not be available and if it is not available plant will not be able to take it and uh, deficiency symptom will be there so nitrogen uh, and uh, moly uh, this uh, molybdenum then uh, potassium phosphorus magnesium zinc etc are uh, expressed in the lower leaves and the copper and uh, uh, sulfur manganese uh, boron uh, iron and the calcium they are uh, uh, expressed in the uh, uh, new growth uh, new leaves actually uh, which means that uh, when uh, in the lower portion deficiency symptom is uh, uh, deficiency symptom is expressed that means plant is not able to get the supply from the soil and uh, all these nutrients are required in the grow, uh, growing point for the new growth no doubt about that all nutrients are required in the grow, uh, growing uh, portion uh, and uh, plant is drawing the nutrient from the uh, lower leaves where the nutrients are there stored there and uh, when nutrient is uh, drawn from the leaves uh, respective nutrient so uh, 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 the symptoms are expressed here but uh, these are the nutrients which are not stored in these leaves and uh, if plant is not able to get the nutrient from the soil then expression is here so what are the uh, natural sources or uh, uh, for home garden uh, what are the sources of the different nutrients if suppose uh, due to some reason or other uh, the nutrient uh, is uh, in short supply in our uh, growing medium then how to substitute that uh, whether it is uh, <coughs> possible from within our home or uh, uh, how to do that so all the nutrients are listed here nitrogen phosphorus potassium calcium and uh, magnesium sulfur etc all macro and uh, micronutrients and here you can see most of the things are available at home like uh, used tea leaves supply nitrogen coffee grounds if you are using decoction coffee from the coffee powder uh, 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 the coffee beans uh, ground coffee beans then uh, that is a good source of many nutrients actually you can see that coffee ground is figuring in different uh, nutrient uh, uh, then uh, also you can plant few bean seeds in the pot in the container if it is a large container and the plant is big enough then you can sow some small size beans like green gram for example because the leguminous plants that is the beans they develop knots in the root and those knots in the root have a certain kind of bacteria which absorb the atmospheric nitrogen and convert it into the available form in the soil so they contribute nitrogen from into the soil uh, taking from the atmosphere 
so planting certain kind of beans in the, to cover the soil uh, also uh, you can increase the uh, nitrogen level in the soil or you, if you uh, grow certain bean crops also then actually it enriches the soil with nitrogen similarly for phosphorus rock phosphorus phosphate is one natural um, mineral i um, mean natural source but uh, otherwise bone meal is available in the market even the hairs are uh, rich in phosphorus so instead of throwing in the dustbin you can add all these things in your compost here i have uh, given the suggestion uh, how to use it mostly you instead of uh, i mean uh, throwing here and there or adding directly in the soil if you add in the uh, compost system then uh, you actually enrich the uh, soil with the nutrient respective nutrient uh, all all kind of nutrient that way certain things are there which can be used as a spoiler spray also for example epsom salt which is mag magnesium sulfate so it supplies magnesium and sulfur also so that you can uh, do the foliar spray or uh, you can add in the compost the coffee ground etc and uh, also the boron or uh, uh, zinc that is uh, zinc sulfate and this uh, natural zinc sulfate if you can get or boric acid is available in the market these can be sprayed also in the on the plant uh, otherwise uh, everything can be added in the compost and that's how you prepare a rich nutrient rich compost and that you can add into the soil, uh, growing medium uh, at the time of preparing the growing medium or later on uh, 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 when you grow the plant already then then also you can keep on adding that so this is all about this uh, uh, today's session uh, namaskar